couple different uh, games to talk about. We got Far Cry 3. Far Cry 3, that's right. Uh, we got a whole bunch of footage from that. Uh, that it's actually me playing the game. Uh, what else? We got Path of Exile. And that one is? It's uh, basically, it's like Diablo. Or Diablo oh. 2. Oh, I like the uh, Diablo 2, okay. And uh, we also have the Unfinished Swan. That's another PS3 game. Uh, that's sort of a, it's on a P, the PSN network. It's a short sort of a playable storybook game, but it's a little more than that. We'll talk about that one. And uh, what else are we going to take? We're going to show a trailer, right? I'm going to be showing a trailer for Planet Side 2. Planet Side 2. And then if we have time, maybe we'll sneak in something about mobile gaming. But we had a pretty packed show today. So the first game we'll talk about is Far Cry 3. So I went out and got this game probably a month after it came out or so. And um, I like it a lot. It's an open world sandbox game. And uh, as you'll be able to see here in the footage we've got, you can even switch to our... We even have a camera that's like built into the screen here, which it might not look like it, but if you switch to it, we'll put some video in there. Mm -hmm. um, so this game is pretty cool. It's a sandbox game, a sandbox shooter. So it's a first person and you are uh, with your college buddies and you're skydiving in the South Pacific for some whatever adventure and you wind up uh, skydiving into the wrong place. <laughs> is what happens and you get kidnapped by pirates and there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on on this island and different factions and, uh, of pirates running around and you need to rescue all your friends who have also been abducted by various bands of pirates on the island. It could all be one band, I don't know. I just, I shoot anybody that looks like a pirate. It's pretty much what it boils down to. Um, but you can grab vehicles and drive around. And as you'll see, uh, you'll see me here driving around all over the place. And you can see that the world is really huge. Um, it just goes on and on and on. I think I got in a vehicle and I drove around for 20 minutes and didn't even cover uh, part of one little section of the island that I was on. Um, you can also get into hang gliders. So you'll see here that I am gliding around and you can fly all over. There was some mention in the challenges or something that if I wingsuited over to somewhere, I would get some sort of bonus. I haven't seen a wingsuit, but I assume that there is uh, one somewhere. Um, he, there, you can see, here I am on the top of a ridge of a mountain, and I am getting ready to plunge down and take out some bad guys. So you'll see I'm coming over here, and uh, there's one of the gliders up ahead that I've been referring to, and I'm going to get in this glider, and I'm going to go down there. And you can see there's wildlife. So there's birds flying around all over the place. Now I've got my, uh, this is a silenced machine gun. So that area out there in the distance, that's actually places you can get to. And now I'm checking the map. So right here where it's red in the middle, that's an outpost of pirates. And uh, every outpost of pirates you clean out becomes like a little base for you, where you can buy and sell weapons, uh, all sorts of things that you gather. And most of the things that you gather in this game are actually pretty functional. Uh, I don't, know if I got in there but anyway if we got it we'll we'll edit it in showing me going uh <laughs> going uh to make make stuff out of like you you kill people and you get the leather or not people but you kill animals and you can use the leather to create harnesses and stuff for your weapons so you can see this world is enormous there I am scrolling all around on the map and Ooh. huge as Jeff says and now when you zoom in, you see more details. So I am on this little tiny spot, and I'm going to be going down in there. Now, a lot of this footage is really long, so we'll just skip ahead here to, uh, to a part where I am actually shooting and killing some guys. I think this entire video that I took is like an hour. Uh, so you can imagine that just in one hour, I was able to do tons of different things. So here, I'll back it up a little bit. And from here we'll play. They don't have any kind of fast scrub on this. Oops, now I switched the videos completely. I'm actually looking at this on my iPhone as you're watching it at home doing it. So it's a different 
kind of control scheme. Ah, well, we'll edit this part out. All right, so now I'm picking up the glider. Here's the part we want. And now I'm gonna come down there. And you, I mean, see how the distance is just enormous. And I'll go down, and we can mess around with the editing. Oh, okay. Cut back to us now. Yeah. We are here in the studio. So there's the base below me. You can see in the distance there's other smoke stacks, smoke uh, columns or whatever. Each of those designates a pirate base. So when you start the game, you'll see stuff in the distance all over. Uh, there are also radio towers in this game. And if you climb up the radio tower and disable the jamming devices, it will reveal a section of the map. So all together in the first part of the game, there's 18 radio towers. Uh, it mentions that there's about 32 pirate bases. Um, there's tons of uh, little sort of artifacts you can collect. And the more you collect things, the more um, recipes that you can unlock, which you can use then to make syringes. So there are all kinds of different power-ups that you can create. So you see me there plunging a health vial into my arm because I kind of fell out of the glider a little too early. <laughs> There's skills that you can improve. So as you gain experience, you can learn how to take down guys from below and silently kill them. You can run further. You can get more health out of each thing that you squirt into your arm. Um, there's all kinds of tactical situations. You can stealth kill. So if you manage to stealth kill everyone in a base, you'll get far more experience than if you just run in with guns a-blazing. You can do power slides up to people. You can sneak through the bushes and stealth kill people. Um, there's all kinds of civilians on the island that if you help them out and do little quests with them, you'll go on little adventures and experience. There's cave networks all over the place. You know, you can go swimming in the water all over, but it's full of sharks. So maybe we'll show some footage of the sharks. There's uh, crocodiles, which I didn't even know about. So one day I was in this river swimming along and all of a sudden this crocodile grabs me and we have this big old tussle. And of course I pull out my little Wakazari katana thing or whatever, mm. and bam, take the croc out. Uh, but you have, to, you have to do kind of a quick time events and hit buttons to do that. Yeah. So, Anyway, and then there's the story, you know, obviously there's the story missions in this game. So I've been playing this game for a long time on the weekend. I sit down and relax with it for a few hours. And uh, it's like Skyrim, but with guns. And in a lot of, some ways it's better than Skyrim because it feels, well, I don't know. That's, I guess, an objective opinion because I like action stuff. But Skyrim, after a while, the environments kind of started to feel the same. Um, the dungeons you went in and stuff kind of mm -hmm. started looking. But in this game, maybe because it's an you know, more realistic environment. There's, it seems like there's a lot of variety. Like the radio towers are not all cookie cutters, although they're the same. Like how you climb up each one is totally different. Like they've weathered them differently, put different junk. Yeah. Every little town is slightly different layouts. The caves are all different. Um, so it's pretty amazing. And I don't even, I think I'm not even halfway through the game yet. And I've been playing for, I don't know, probably like at least 30 hours into the game, 40 right. hours into the game. So uh, Far Cry 3, there's also multiplayer online. I haven't even touched that. There is co-op that you can play with other people. Um, and I think they have some downloadable content already as well. And the game has monkeys, yeah. has leopards, tigers, which you don't want to run into, even with a machine gun, because for some reason these are very, very tough tigers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the first time you get, you hear that growl in the bushes, uh, run. That's my advice. <laughs> So anyway, Far Cry 3, I definitely recommend it if you are into shooters or into any kind of sandbox. So I would say a game that's similar to this, if you, if you have played them, uh, the Mercenaries games, uh, Just Cause games, uh, I'm not sure what other ones that are out there, but imagine Infamous with guns or something like that, or Prototype with guns as opposed to superpowers. Um, but Far Cry 3, I think, is definitely a very well done game, and the graphics are very nice. You have sunsets, tropical, beautiful tropical sunsets. Could probably cut one of those in. Um, oh, the original Crisis was on an island. The original Crisis was on an island, and you know it's got physics and everything. So like, you blow up barrels, and you've got rocket launchers. Bodies go flying. <laughs> The other day I blew up a pack of dogs for some mission. Mm -hmm. These were rabid bad dogs, not the nice puppy kind. Mm -hmm. And you know, just one of them goes flying, flying through the air. It was hilarious. Um, so 
It's pretty cool. I like it. Although, the one thing I don't like, uh-huh. the main character that you play, like, he's kind of a wuss. Like, he gets tougher and, you know, he gets tattoos on him. But if you see the graphics on him for him, on the, maybe it's just the PS3. Uh-huh. He kind of looks, you know, like, I don't know. I didn't feel like I was empathizing with him. Sure, the situation. His older brother was uh, more of a dude's dude. This guy's kind of like, I don't want to say any bad language, but, you know, whatever. Mm. He could use some toughening up and a new hairstyle. That's all I got to (laughs) say. Maybe I shouldn't talk, but I'm growing this hair for a good cause. Um, All right, so let's take a little break. Uh, We'll see a little bit of Planet Side 2. And then when we come back, Bryce will tell you about Path of Exile. Okay. That was pretty awesome, Bryce. That was uh, Planet Side 2. Yeah. Pretty sick looking. Planet Side 2. I'm hoping. Pretty good, yeah. Um, Wish I could play it. The, the, now, you heard the rumor that like this thing was so advanced, right? It could run on any computer at full quality yeah. currently. I still don't so, think they fixed that. Well, you know, they got the new PS4 coming out soon. We just heard that announcement not too long ago that PS4 will probably be launching this fall. Um, and their idea of a reasonable price, the rumor is now like 500 or 400 something, which to me is still too much money, but, um, they're claiming they saved a lot of money by not building factories for all the chips this time around because they're going with an AMD, uh, eight core processor. It's good that they're going with AMD. 
Yeah, it's, right. I think yeah, and I think they can get it at a, at a decent price and everything. So we'll yeah. we'll see. It's actually eight cores is about the same as what they have with the cell, except that each of these cores is actually a full on uh, CPU core and not a limited uh, sort of a limited stream processor. I think the uh, cell things are SIMD maybe. Anyway, we won't get into that. So that's Planet Side 2, so maybe it'll look super awesome when it comes out on uh, the PS4. Um, Do they have any plan to port it? I, I think so. In fact, I think that they've been actually working on the PS4 a lot longer in terms of software. So it, to me, it sounds like they're planning on having a very strong launch lineup compared to the previous launches of, say, the PS1 through the PS3, where they would launch and they'd have like one maybe good game, flagship game, and yeah. then the other games were really weak, and you had to wait like six months or a year for a good game to come out as people got used to programming it. Yeah. But it sounds like this time around, they've planned far in advance, and they're going to have a lot of high-quality games right when they launch, which would be, um, I'd say if they had six quality games when they launch, that'd probably be the strongest launch of any console ever. Most consoles, when they launch, usually only have one or two good games, and, and then they have a bunch of guys who are jumping on the bandwagon earlier. Yeah. Um, I got to remember that our audience is up in the camera lens. They're hidden in that camera and not down on the. <laughs> Wait, kind of like <laughs> I'm gonna turn this off down here so we don't get too distracted by that. <laughs> yeah, okay. All, right. All right, we can edit that part out. Um, yeah, should we? Should we? I don't know. All right, so um, Bryce, you checked out this game called Path of Exile. Path of Exile. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Path of Exile? Okay, so Path of Exile is a game that's... Oh, over here, let me cut to me. Path of Exile is a game, uh, it's pretty much... It's a lot like Diablo, or Diablo, I guess Diablo 2. Yeah. And it's in the way that it's played. It's a action RPG. You've got... You play as a character, you can cast spells, and the character that I'm playing is an archer right now. So that's yeah. it's really nice. I like bow characters. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I did in Skyrim. I ran around with a bow and all these stealth enhancements, and yeah. basically you like some kind of medieval sniper. <laughs> yeah, I've got like a split arrow thing where I can split three arrows and they go off into it's like a shotgun bow. So the the arrows actually target different. Uh, well, you can't like or? target them, but it's like. You shoot three arrows at once and they and nice spray. spray it. Yeah. Kind of interesting. That sounds like something you'd see in a crazy manga. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, the nice thing about this game is that they're about, uh, it's got a nice skill tree with about uh, 1,500 skills or so. Wait a minute. 1,500? Yeah. Maybe it's like <laughs> 1,100, but it's somewhere Jeez. in there. So. How long would it, I mean? Is this a game that's meant to be played like a Skyrim, where you're playing for like a hundred or two hundred hours? Oh, or? Yeah. oh, so it's a really deep game. It's a pretty. I've been. It's in beta right now, so. Oh, it's not even. Fully not even out. Full. Well, at the time so, I was playing it, it wasn't. Oh, okay, okay. Wasn't. I don't know. I haven't been on the computer. Oh, that's right. Because uh, my my <laughs> PC is broken right now, guys. <laughs> so I've not played games and. Well, I actually uh, in the time since we did the. The first segment of Far Cry, yeah, I finished it. So <laughs> definitely worth picking up. I, I did enjoy it. Um, so Path of Exile. So that's available on Steam. Uh, no, it's available on their website. Oh, uh, so this is an indie game. Would you is, say? Uh, yeah, it's a very indie game. And no, and it's a first person. No, it's a top. top oh, yeah, top it looks down. exactly oh, okay. like a Diablo style game. Oh, that's right. Or Torchlight. Torchlight or the old... Um, oh, the old D&D, &D, like Neverwinter and Planescape and stuff yeah. like that. Although those were uh, sort of tiled 2D type yeah. games. I think all kinds of games are probably going to be making a comeback because pretty much they've done everything they can as far as engines go. Yeah. So, um, so what else are we going to talk about today? So Path of Exile, we know, is uh, definitely worth checking out if you're into RPGs. Um, so the other game we're going to talk about today is uh, The Unfinished Swan. This is available on PSN for the PS3. Uh, it is a sort of an... Uh, I wouldn't say it's an indie game because it's uh, Santa Monica Studios, which is sort of the indie division of uh, Sony. 
Sony's uh, gaming companies. Oh, man, I can't even remember what they're called. But anyway, Sony Computer Entertainment, I guess, is what it is. And it's their sort of indie division. And so Santa Monica is the studio that kind of uh, oversees and helps supervise the production of games like Journey and Flow and sort of the more unusual creative artsy games that you'll see on PSN. So The Unfinished Swan is uh, it's sort of like a little storybook. And you're an orphan and your mom has passed away and so you, you've been sent off to the orphanage. You've never really known who your father was and she's left you this little silver paintbrush. And one day you wake up in the middle of the night and uh, you see a swan in your room and you're like, okay, what's up with that? Why is there a swan in my room? So you follow the swan through a magic door in the, that appears in the wall and you grab your little paintbrush because you don't want to leave the only thing your mother ever left you behind. And you wind up in this world that is completely white. Mm -hmm. I'm looking over here now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and now I'm back on. Uh, you wind up in this world that's completely white. And by taking your paintbrush and splattering black ink all over, or paint, depends, uh -huh. it looks like ink, um, suddenly it hits the walls and various objects that are there, but they're all white and you couldn't see them before. So it's like you're making the world appear before you by painting it. And so you start exploring and you come across a little pond and you find a castle and you're like, well, you better investigate the castle. And all along you're following these yellow footprints that are kind of paint splatters like this shape that the swan has left behind. So yeah, I've even got my, my hands in the correct thing. So it's really kind of uh, cool. Um, and as you can see here, you know, in the footage that it's like, it's a really neat effect. And as the game progresses, you can now start doing other things besides ink. So at a certain point, you'll start splattering water all over the place. When you splatter water, it'll make, uh, say there's a plant. All of a sudden the plant, if you splatter it with water, it'll grow. It'll follow where you're going with the water. And I don't want to say too much more than that because the, the, as the game goes on, more and more gets revealed. Um, and you kind of discover about your history and your mother's history and all these different things that are going on, all the while trying to you know, figure out yeah. where is this unfinished swan trying to lead me. Uh, the whole game only takes uh, maybe an afternoon to play. And then you can go back and you can try and get all kind of like the little bonus things like getting the balloons that you see around mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. But I found it very entertaining. The game, and I think, anticipates your reactions pretty well because there were definitely times where I was like, just like, wow. And then all of a sudden the character in the game would go, wow, like right at that moment too. And I'm like, wow, they knew, they knew the I would say wow. Say wow again? Like yeah. And then the character said, wow, you said wow. And it was just like an endless cycle of wows. No, <laughs> no, but it, you know what I mean? So it's, it's very interesting that they, they were trying to go for these emotional moments. And in fact, it worked because, it, and that, that happened more than once. And it wasn't just me saying, oh, if I say wow now, is he going to say wow? It just, it was very natural. Yeah. Um, because the graphics were really, even though they're very simple, um, they're very impressive. So I liked it a lot. Um, there were sort of like little vague reminders of, uh, and I'm not saying these are sort of, uh, what do you call them? Downsides. They're not Easter eggs oh. or attributes too, but like I was sort of reminded a little bit of Psychonauts and Moments in there and some other games that were platformers. I wouldn't say this is a platformer, more like maybe a little bit of a puzzler. Um, but very enjoyable and a, and a really unique look. And... You know, the game is on PSN, it's not that expensive, so I would say The Unfinished Swan is definitely worth checking out if you are looking for an afternoon of entertainment, and it's totally, you know, appropriate for all ages, so I, I would think anybody that you sat down in front of that would probably get a kick out of it. It is a motion-enabled game, and uh, we might even have a little bit here of me trying to calibrate the, the, the motion sensor, which was not very instinctual. I would say it's, it was easy enough to do, but there wasn't a button that said, okay, I'm done. So I would line it all up and then somehow I would wind up resetting it and having to do it again because there was no obvious like, okay, I'm ready to go into the game. Mm -hmm. That was the only flaw in the game was I think the motion calibration could have been clarified a little bit. But once you had that motion controller clarified, you could throw with the paint like this and that and you would throw the paint out. It was very cool. 
right. And it works with a regular controller if you don't have the motion. Mm -hmm. So that's the unfinished swan. And I think we have... That's, that's, that's the it. show. Yeah, that's the show. All right. So that wraps up episode... We're, we're, we're thinking that was number six. <laughs> we're not sure. Uh, and we will be back much quicker with another episode because yeah. Game Developers Conference is going on right now. And man, there's a lot of stuff coming out. Oh, yeah. Uh, announcements everywhere. Plus, there's new games we've been playing. And